It is. It's fascinating. I. That is a great story, man. You actually made fake credentials for a fake, I guess, news. Oh no, it was a real news network, but I just. Oh, made... So like CNN. So you made like CNN. <laughs> Credentials well, in Canada, the CBC, you know, the, CBC. Uh, the, Canadian, and, the Canadian version of it, and and it's, since it's another country, they're really not going to check. And it's you're at the thing, and it's like it, it, it has a high probability that it would work. It really I had is. some help. I almost got busted on that particular one, but there was a Detroit radio DJ, Steve Grunwald, that I knew that really like pulled the you know, no, 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 he's good, he's legit. We know him, you know, and like oh, like, Donnie Brasco wave, style. Yeah, wave me in, wave me in. So that was. <laughs> Yeah, it's and it's just been one of those adventures where if I trace everything back, I'm like, man, how different would my career in life be if not for that particular moment? Because I ended up shortly after that, like hopping on the tour bus with them and shooting some tour video stuff for them. And it led to that opportunity to come to L.A. and shoot this DVD. And that opened up doing music videos and, you know, just this crazy adventure I never thought I'd, I'd be on. Or had I stayed in Windsor, Ontario, Canada, just trying to make indie films, right. you know. And Maybe would, have never moved to L.A. or done anything more significant. Who knows? And if once you landed three, uh, Third Eye Blind, which was a very big, you know, they were a huge band in the 90s, without question. Mm-hmm. They were one of those big bands. Then that automatically gave you the credibility. And then, the, like, well, if they're working with Third Eye Blind, well, then, you know, they can kind of work with us. And it just kind of yeah, snowballs. Definitely, definitely. And they're one of those bands where they're still, people still love that first record so much. Oh, and, so, you know, they, they, still, they still sell 10,000 seats, 15,000 seats a night, you know, like they're out, they're out with Jimmy Eat World this year, like I said, like they're, you know, they're, they're still, still going hard. Still have a fan base. But yeah, it definitely opens up more opportunities. And then one management company sees what you do and contact you. And one one good video, you know, begets another music video opportunity where yeah. a band reaches out. You know, especially once YouTube took over oh, and yeah. there was a way for people to see the director and find the contacts for directors. And um, you know, that's if not for the sort of social media YouTube, that's that's the other thing that was happening in parallel around the same time you know, 2003 to 2006 was all the social media boom and making it accessible to find other filmmakers and find bands that needed videos versus just this wasteland of waiting for your phone to possibly ring or only being able to go through the traditional channels of having a music video agent and mm-hmm. then the they work with them. And it was a very closed system, like it's same similar with film distribution and everything else It the gates were locked to most of us until, until, you know, the indie film revolution and digital video took off. Yeah, and then and did you have to put your reel on like three quarter inch and send it off, or was it? Well, that was more commercial yeah. work. No, I mean I still had I had I had reels on 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 Betamax and reels Oof. lots lots of VHS demos. You know, like let's make the the most beautiful color labels for all of these. Right, right. We'll hand press them at home, but they'll look like a machine did it. It's fine. You know. <laughs> Uh, oh, the yeah, craziness, yeah. the craziness. And on a side note, if anybody wants to try to break into a or, or break into a a party uh, or anything along those lines, I mean, it is a little bit of a different world than it was back in the day. I mean, you know, when I used to work at Universal, I would just I would just wave and pretend I look I worked there and people would just let me in. Uh, this is pre 9-11. But uh, but this might still work if you're at Sundance and you want to get into a Sundance party, one of those house parties, all you have to do is just know at least two or three names of some big agents at CAA or at or, or do a lot of WME. Pointing. It's always it's always some like pointing. 19 or 20 year old college uh, intern at the door yep. or volunteer. Yep. And one of the great things about millennials is they're so uh, shy of conflict and then <laughs> they don't want to make a lot of eye contact. <laughs> yes. Just be like, I'm supposed to be on the list and point into the bar or the restaurant or the party and say, well, I mean, is Jim in there? Like say the person is, is Jim, uh, is J- Jim Atwell in there? I'm mm-hmm. here with Jim Atwell. I'm just going to go in and see if Jim's, I'll, I'll come back out and find you, but I'm, I'm going to go see if Jim's here. He'll, he'll come clear everything up and then just never come back and they don't, they won't care. <laughs> what I used to do is I used to when I was starting out at Sundance I would walk up to the to the table and I'd be like yeah uh yeah Ricky Ricky Smalls please yeah uh, CAA and they would look on the list and they're like oh yeah Ricky's yeah go in Mr. Smalls I'll be like oh, yes amazing. thank you so much and hope that he hadn't just walked in three minutes yeah I would go or I would yeah, go earlier it's, it's because I knew he would never get there earlier and he I actually was an acquaintance of a friend who knew him so we knew that he was there so, but if not, just get a list of people that you know who are going to be there, and then you can use their names. To get 
<laughs> getting backstage at, at concerts, you take your cell phone and as you walk close to the security, you start to be like, yeah, I'm with the band for at least the next three cities. Yeah, we're going to Dallas tomorrow. We might fly out and do this other thing. But yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely tell him I'm about to see them. I'm going to say hi. And, and if you look important, half the time the guy at the gate's not going to be like, I that guy's too important to like interrupt and ask to see oh. his credentials. That's, 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 worked, that's worked a handful of times. You know, this is why we have Indie Film Hustle is to teach people <laughs> these kind of tips. These are things that are not on the uh, the show notes. So uh, for anyone listening, these are some bonus, bonus things from two, two hustlers who've been able to hustle backstage. Yeah. And it's I- a-